All right. Uh, there are a few announcements that I want to go over. Uh, we do have Christmas cards in the back. Um, your, your pastor is not as creative as most of the other members of the church. All I did was put Merry Christmas on it. So your household gets, gets the card, even if your name is not on, on the front of the card. Is that okay with everybody? I'm, I'm, I'm still getting used to who's connected to who family-wise and household-wise, so I figured it was safer for me to just say Merry Christmas and let you handle your own household. Is that okay? Um, one more thing. It was in the bulletin yes, last week, but we never got to sing happy birthday to our December birthday babies. So um, I want to start off with us doing that before I do any other announcements, because I will forget. So let's sing happy birthday to everybody born in December. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, also, before the service is over, I have certificates for the Stewardship and Finance Commission. Um, over the last couple of weeks, I've been trying to give out certificates to all our officers for 2022-2023. Um, I made sure that the stewards got theirs at our quarter or on Sunday. Or in case of Joyce, who, by the way, y'all, she's here. She's on the piano player. Say hi. Amen. Amen. <laughs> um, I mailed hers to her as well as her Christmas card. Uh, for the rest of you, like I said, at the back, uh, there are Christmas cards from, from me. Unlike everybody else, it's not a household. So if you see the big stack that's all together, those are the ones from me. Um, let me think of what other announcements I have that are not printed in your bulletin. Tomorrow, Monday, December the 12th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. right next door, the new Montessori ribbon cutting and open house ceremony will take place. So if you'd like to come and you're able to do so, please come and celebrate their open house. I'm gonna do my best to be there tomorrow. Um, Let's see what else. We got a Christmas card from Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. And it says, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. May your home be filled with God's peace, joy, and love this Christmas and in the new year. Love you, Ninth Street Missionary Baptist Church. So that's the first Christmas card that the church got was from Ninth Street Baptist Church. Also, um, like the community did for Thanksgiving. Um, the Lawrence community is looking for volunteers and donations for the community Christmas dinner. Um, this year's event, I'm sorry y'all, I'm trying to scan through the article so I can see the dates. Um, they'll be collecting turkeys at Corpus Christi Catholic Church from 3 to 6 p.m. on December the 14th. Um, pies of any flavor can be bought to First United Methodist Church um, after 6 p.m. on Christmas Day. Um, and if you're donating anything, there is a number for you to contact. I can give you that information if you need it. But this was also information that was in um, our newspaper. Let's see, what else did I forget? I think that is all the additional announcements that I have. Some that are in our bulletin. As you know, our congregation this Sunday and next Sunday are collecting um, donations for Christmas baskets and for Christmas bags. Um, Annette, do you want to give us a little bit more detail about what we were looking for, for donations, more specifically for the bags. Um, yeah, people are going to try to make at least 60 uh, Christmas bags. If there's not 60 children, then the adults can also have a bag to go to one of the boys bags. So it's a bag for looking at the police. And after the orange and the green, and then the yellow, and then the red, and then the blue, and then the red, and then the blue, and then the red, 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 and then the red
Um, I got some the bits of candy, like the cookie with candy cane, um, some little bracelets for the kids that say a scriptural things on the bracelet and bookmark. And then we're gonna add hard candy and chocolate, but we're not we're requesting no nuts of any kind because we do have uh, the pastor's children are allergic to nuts, and we don't want to put anyone at jeopardy for having a reaction to nuts. So, in lieu of that, we might add raisins or whatever. So, I will take any donations that you might have to help with the cost of the Christmas bag. I was thinking on um, December 30th and staying away from the uh, Christmas Eve because I know it's busy for everyone. That we can meet at the church, um, and I'll talk to Wesley. So I want to make sure the church is warm, and maybe we can meet in the afternoon around three o'clock. And if we're willing to meet, we can all together um, stuff the Christmas bag, and then we'll put all of the bags inside the refrigerator to keep them cold um, with the fruit and such until Sunday. And then the bag will be given to everybody after the church. So if you're willing to give money, I'll take it. If you're wanting to bring apples and oranges, I hear that some person, um, maybe Justine. Justine already brought a bag of apples and oranges. So if you bring around 60 people, you don't have to bring for 60, but if you can bring for, you know, whatever is comfortable in terms of what you can afford, if you can donate, that would be appreciated. But I thought it would make it fun. We're also going to have a calling tree where Members can choose uh, the states of names. I'm going to have that next Sunday, but I'm also going to call people who might not make it to church and just give a call to members and let them know we're thinking about them, invite them to our Sunday, our Christmas service. Also, just if there's anything we can help them with and just let them know that we're thinking about them and we love them and we'd like to see them back at church. So that's about it. Okay. Okay, and as you know, we've got the boxes back there to collect food for the Christmas baskets, which food our food is coming in. So we're looking good. Um, once again, thank you, everybody. I, I know uh, in the grand scheme of things, this was an idea um, to love on each other that might seem last minute. But look at what God does when God puts something on your heart. God empowers you to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can even think or ask. I already know just from the donations that have come in today, we've got enough donations where, where we could be a significant blessing in more than one somebody's life. So, so thank you, St. Luke, for the way you love and the way you spread hope and joy. Um, some other things to keep in mind, this coming Saturday, December the 17th, um, Team Midwest Lay is sponsoring their outing with Santa um, at New Bethel AME Church from two to 4 p.m. So if you'd like to come out, it's a fun experience. Uh, there will be a Santa um, there that people can take pictures with that it doesn't even have to just be kids. If you wanna take family pictures, um, there will be an opportunity for that. And they normally also have different um, games and different things that the, the kids can do. Um, let's see, just a reminder, Tuesday, December 20th is our monthly store board meeting at 7 p.m. Thursday, December 22nd is our monthly stewardship and finance meeting also at 7 p.m. Um, and then on December 31st at 5 p.m. here at the church is when the Midwest AME Ministerial Alliance is going to host watch night service. I believe that's all the announcements that I know of that I'm supposed, supposed to announce. If I forgot something, can y'all charge it to my head and not my heart? Um, I, I would be honest, I was a little thrown off today by the fog. It snowed my commute here. So, so if I forgot something, I apologize. And feel free to, to, to tug. If you tug my skirt, don't tug too hard. But it, at least tug me after church and let me know that I forgot something and we can handle it um, either in an email or calls. Let's see. I think that covers all of our announcements. Just put a pin in your calendar for February for our Black History Month. 
um, you'll get more information about it. But like we said last week, if you know of churches or individuals who might want to sing or do a praise dance or do a reading, uh, let us know because we'd like to be able to invite them to our program. And um, the theme is going to be, we've got a story to tell. That's all of our announcements. So we are going to shift to our Sunday school reports. Um, Virginia, can you get your Sunday school report ready and I'll come down to you so everybody will be able to hear you. And then Denver, you can be up next. And I'm, I'm coming down um, to Virginia now. All right, Miss Virginia, um, what's the title of your lesson? It's called a new baby. And what was the name of the new baby? John. And what was special about his name? Was that the same name as his father had? Yeah. Oh, so he got a different name than his father had. Why did he, why did he get, a, get a different name? Oh, so they followed what God told them to do. All right, what are some highlights from your lesson that you want to share with us tonight? All right, you got speech, you listen. Very good. Anything else from your lesson that you want to share with us? Nothing else? That's it? All right, thank you very much for your Sunday school report. <coughs> And have her do her Sunday school report. You will have to unmute yourself, Denver. Okay, can everybody hear me? We can. Okay, so my lesson was called Zacharias Speaks. And the reason why it was called this is because, like, Zachariah is known for practically being mute and all of a sudden out of nowhere he starts praising God because of how happy he was that he and his wife were finally going to have a child and everybody fully expected them to like give a name that was closer to what their family was but no they decided to name him name the child John which everybody was astonished by that, amazed even. And so they, they name him John because they realized that um, the, he's gonna be special. He's gonna be different from what anybody is expecting from him. And that's, that's why they named him that. Thank you very much. Stamber, is there anything else from your report that you want to share with the class, share with the church? Well, if not, I want to thank both Virginia and Denver for sharing their Sunday school lesson reports with us, which gives us adults a glimpse of what we'll get to cover after church today. Amen. All right. Um, hopefully everybody has a copy of their order of service. I'm going to highlight some of it for us. Um, we will start off with our doxology. We'll go through to our call to worship. Then we will do our morning prayer and our prayer response. Our scriptures for the day will be Isaiah 35 verses one through 10 and Matthew chapter 11 verses two through 11. Um, we'll do our summary of the Decalogue. Our opening hymn for the day will be Joy to the World, which is hymn number 120. Um, we'll do our Advent lighting. 
today and Junior and Lindy Harden are going to do the Advent lighting for today. Thank you again for agreeing to do that. Um, then we will do our altar call, which is the opportunity for all of us to come to the altar and pray or to pray in our seats. Then after that, we'll do our tithes and offering, which will be our opportunity to give in the service. After that, um, I believe we will do a, another selection, um, Highway to Heaven. And then we will shift into the message. Um, we'll do our invitation to discipleship and decision time. We'll do our doxology. And then we will do our benediction. And that will be our service for today. Uh, let us stand. And sing, praise God from whom all the lessons flow. to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You may be seated as we prepare our hearts and our minds for prayer. Let's pray. Wonder working God, Lord God and Lamb of God, we praise you, we magnify you, and we bless your name. Today, great God, we welcome you into this space. We welcome you into this place. And we ask, oh God, that you would fill us with every good and perfect gift so that we don't leave the same way we came. In the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
Amen. God's been just that good. We just want to thank God for every good and perfect gift that God has bestowed on us. Um, our scripture lessons for the day are from Isaiah chapter 35, verses 1 through 10. And then the New Testament lesson is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11. When you have Isaiah chapter 35, beginning at verse 1, feel free to say amen. I'll be reading it from the New Revised Standard Updated Edition. Um, listen for the word of God. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The, majest the majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful or who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be opened. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The hunt of jackals shall become a swant. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fool, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Um, our New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11, beginning at verse two and concluding with verse 11. When you have that, say amen. I will also be reading it from the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. Listen for the word of God. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. <sighs> What then did you go out to see? A prophet. Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet, the least in the kingdom of heaven 
is greater than he. Church, these are the words of God. All praise and praise be to God. Let's stand for the summary of our Decalogue. Um, so Jesus has this ingenious way of summarizing every rule and regulation that God gives us in the book of Genesis through the book of Malachi. He says, we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, because it's the first and great commandment. He also says, we have to learn to love our neighbors just like we love ourselves, because on these two commandments depend every law and every prophet. Our glory of Hatshree, glory be to the Father. Oh, glory be to the Father. So since it's Advent, uh, I'm sure y'all have picked out I like music, I like songs. One of my favorite Christmas hymns is Joy to the World. Um, so I thought we could sing that one today. It's hymn 120. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven in nature sing and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing.
are going to pause and shift. We're going to do our candle lighting and I'm going to invite the Hardens to come up and do our candle lighting reading for us. You can go ahead and use the microphone if you can. The wilderness and the dry land will be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be the last people. No traveler, not even a fool, shall go astray. And the ransoms of the Lord shall return unto Zion with singing, everlasting joy shall be upon the earth. We shall sing joy and gladness and sorrow, with, and time shall be away. The prophet Isaiah tells us about the joy of the city to God's house. The prophet tells us to imagine being set free, being unburdened. Being released to live, fully live in the grace and wonderful life of soul, surrounded by those who love us like no one else. And then he tells us that the journey to get there is the death of much more. The Psalmist says, Happy are we whose who help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord, who made heaven and earth, who keeps faith, who executes justice, gives food. But pregnant free, open eyes, lift up, watches over, upholds the Lord, who reign forever, who are God for nine for all generations, praise the Lord. Yeah. We light these candles, the candle of joy and so of proclaimed peace, and of deep and everlasting joy, as a sign that we are those who walk with the schedule one step, because we can see the destiny, and it is your joy. We are ascending to God's promise. Amen. 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 We thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and for those of us who are um, on deck for the next couple of Sundays to participate in our Advent lighting ceremony, you have seen three different examples of how it can be done. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I believe next week, um, Rebecca and Wes are up and then on Christmas Day, um, a next family is up. So um, thank you everybody for reclaiming a tradition of reminding everybody, not only is there always hope, but God is only done when God says so, amen. All right, as we shift, um, this is a moment in the service where we all have a chance to participate. Um, the altar call is the time where we can come to the altar and have a little talk with Jesus and tell him everything that's going on in our life. Or we can pray in our seat. The, the point is to make a connection with the person, with the one who makes the most important connection with us. The altar is open for prayer. Will you come?
Amen. 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 Silent night, holy night. Christ, the Savior, is born. This is yet another opportunity where we can participate in our worship service. It's time for our offering. As our ushers come, uh, we're going to pray, and I'm going to invite you to give back to God generously a portion of what God has given to you. Let us pray. Wonderful, loving, all glorious God, we thank you for these gifts that we are giving, and we ask that you would bless them and anoint them so that they can be used for your kingdom glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. stand and sing all things come of thee O lord Joy sent me an email. She's like, I got that song, Pastor. We, we can do Highway to Heaven. So those of you who know Highway to Heaven, we, we, we're going to sing Highway to Heaven as our sabbatic selection today. Amen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the part of the song is the part where they go if you're not walking 
stop while I'm talking, walking up the king's highway, because the truth of the matter is, church, God has made it possible for us to walk. God has made it possible for us to crawl. God has made it possible for us to run. God has made it possible to go up the king's highway. Um, so as we prepare for the word of God today, let's pray. Wonder working, all loving, fabulous, show enough, all that God. Right now, we invite you to let Rachel decrease so that you will increase, that you would gift us with a word of life, a word of hope, a word of love, a word of joy, a word of peace, a word that empowers us and emboldens us so we can walk up your highway. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, it's Advent, y'all, and we're making our way to Christmas where we remember that God chose to break into our reality, that God chose to step into our dark places, that God chose to become part of a world that wasn't always loving and kind to the things of God. And because of that, I want to ask you to do me a solid and do something atypical and unusual in this season. Usually um, during this time of year, we spend the majority of our time in the Gospels of Matthew and the Gospels of Luke. But today I want you to go to the Gospel of John, the first chapter, and I wanna read verses 10 through 18, but then I also wanna put my emphasis on verses 12 through 16. John chapter one, beginning at verse 10 and concluding with verse 18. And I am reading it from the New Century Version, which is a translation of the Bible written specifically for second to fourth graders. All right. John chapter one, verses 10 through 18 from the New Century Version, listen for the word of God. The word was in the world and the world was made by him, but the world did not know him. He came to the world that was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him and believe in him, he gave the right to become children of God. They did not become his children in any human way, by any human parents or human desire. They were born of God. The word became a human and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only son of the father, and he was full of grace and truth. John tells the truth when, about him when he cries out, this is the one I told you about. The one who comes after me is greater than I am because he was living before me, because he was full of grace and truth. From him, we all receive one gift after another. The law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God, the only son, is very close to the father, and he has shown us what God is like. Verses 12 through 16, once again, for emphasis in your hearing, but to all who did accept him and believe in him, he gave the right to become children of God. They did not become children in any human way by any human parents or human desire. They were born of God. The word became a human and lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only son of the father, and he was full of grace and truth. John tells the truth about him and cries out, this is the one I told you about. The one who comes after me is greater than I am because he was living before me, because he was full of grace and truth. From him, we all received 
one gift after another. Um, so if you're looking for a title for the message, it's origin stories. Um, and I say this particular passage of scripture is an origin story because um, for those of you who are like, well, Pastor, why, why are you bringing a message from the Gospel of John, which has no birth narrative? Because it's not a birth narrative, but it's an origin story. Um, a birth narrative just, just tells you about, the, about your born day, but an origin story tells you about where you really truly come from. And, 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 and what I love about this particular origin story is that it's not Jesus's, it's not just Jesus's origin story. If y'all will bear with me, I, I, I have come to understand when I look at this passage of scripture that it's also my origin story. It's also your origin story. It is the origin story of any and everybody, somebody who dares to put their hope and trust in God through Jesus Christ because the word says that the word of God the word of God, that which God used to say to dark spaces, you need to cut that mess out. Let there be light. And light said, oh, yes, Lord, here I am. I'm on board. I'm, 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 uh, this is the same word that through which God said, there ought to be some water on the earth. And the water said, here I am. I will be an ocean for you, Lord. Here I am. I will be a lake for you, Lord. Here I am. I will be a river for you, Lord. The word is the same tool that God used to say, bring forth. There ought to be some birds. Bring forth. There ought to be some creatures. Bring forth. There ought to be human beings through the word of God, that which was chaotic and unformed and messed up and so upset. I ain't going to stay this way because through the word of God, God created order out of chaos. And this same word, y'all, this same word, y'all, this same word stepped into a world that was just as messed up and so up and took on flesh. Became solid, became human, became fragile, became an itty bitty baby like Creighton over here. Imagine that our God who created order out of chaos chose to show us that God would save us, that God would heal us, that God would renew us, that God would restore us by taking the form of a baby. By becoming like us, by having the same beginning that you and I have. You, 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 you know what babies do, right? Babies trust the ones they've been gifted to. Uh, you, you, you know what babies do, right? Babies also bring joy to folk. Um, I, um, I can't remember which one of the kids' Sunday school lessons said it, but, but they said, um, folk got to work hard to be foul and nasty around a baby. <laughs> new, new, newborn babies just have a tendency to bring the best out of you. And, and in order for you to hang on to the worst, you got to work hard at it. Imagine that that's how God chooses to save us. God does not send a warrior king like David. God does not send a strategist like Solomon. God sends Jesus as a baby to prove that when we are weak, God is strong. And that is enough. That's enough to take our sad days and transform them into happy days. That, that's enough to take our worries, to hold our worries and say, though there is reason to worry, there's even more reason to hope. That is enough, 
y'all to strengthen our arms and to strengthen our legs and to strengthen our hearts and to strengthen our minds and to gift us with the capacity to see past every ugly and negative thing and choose to believe that a God who loves us enough to break in to our reality. Um, the theological word for that is incarnation. Um, God chooses even today to break into our realities. God chooses to knock on our hearts. God chooses to knock on our minds. God chooses to knock on our spirits to remind us that God is still stepping in to our reality and gifting us with a brand new origin story. I don't know what anybody told you about where you come from. I don't actually care what anybody told you about where you come from, because what I know is, despite whatever they told you, where you come from is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Where you come from is somebody who looks at you and says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Where you come from is somebody who is willing to do whatever it takes so you can be the best that you can be, so that you can have love and joy and peace and hope and purpose, so that you can leave every space where you connect with God different than the way you came. What I love about this particular origin story is it goes beyond the birth of a human and it touches on the creation of a people for God. We are that people. We are that which God sacrifices everything for. We are that for which God loves us over, through, and around. We are the reason why the word of God becomes flesh. We are the reason why Jesus lives. Oh, snap, did y'all not catch that part? I didn't say he lived. Duh. That's past tense. We're the reason why Jesus lives. We are the reason why Jesus speaks. We are the reason why Jesus saves. We are the reason why Jesus uplifts. We are the reason why Jesus reaches and grabs us and wraps us in his arms and says, you are mine. So act like it. Don't let anybody tell you that you ain't all that a bag of chips, some dip, a two liter of coke, and a little bit of ice, too. I am God. I tell you who you are. And now I invite you to act like it. I am God. I tell you that you are worthy of every good thing. I am God. I tell you that I see you. I hear you. I know when you're going through hard times. I know when you're going through good times. And I know when you're going through the in-between times. And I am still there, always present, always loving, always healing, always strengthening, always encouraging, because I am God. And I say that you are awesome. The question is, if you believe me, are you gonna keep the story to yourself? Are you gonna sound the alarm? Are you gonna risk folk going, mm, here come another one of them believers. They are gonna tell me all about Jesus Christ Gill. Best thing ever happened to me. So, so I can't tell, help but tell you how awesome the Lord is to me. I'm going to keep telling you. And if you don't want this, then plug your ears because I ain't going to stop talking. Because that's how good God has been. 
That's the kind of person that God has created and saved me and you to be. We are not people who stop. We are not people who give up hope. We are not people who fold when times get hard. We are people who more closely to God cling. We are people who sound the alarm just like John did and say, there is a savior of the world unlike anybody else ever born. There is a God who chooses to step into our reality and transform our reality and transform us so that we are the best that we can be. So now you and I have to decide whether we will be the people that Jesus saved us to be. Will we claim our origin story and be a hope-saturated people who don't give up on God or each other? Because the word of God is, our origin story is tied to the origin story of our savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our origin story is tied to our savior, Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful world it would be, church, if we weren't the only ones who had the same origin story. This church is the word of God for the people of God. All thanks and praise be to God. This is one of those moments in our service where I get to offer you an opportunity to make a decision for God through Jesus Christ. So if you have never accepted the gift of salvation, this is your moment. You can receive the gift of salvation today. The altar is open. Is there one? Come to Jesus. Is there one? If that's not the decision you need to make today, if you're looking for a church home and don't have a permanent one, you can become a member of this fellowship of believers. The altar is open for you. Is there one? Is there one? He will say, is there one? Is there anybody wanting special prayer today? The altar is open. Is there one? The altar is open. Is there one? Though none come, there's always room. for joining us for worship today. And as we prepare to stand for our doxology and closing benediction, um, I remind you that God is not finished with us yet. And what, and no eye has seen, no ear has heard the things that God has in store for us today. Let's stand for our doxology. Thank you. 
truth is we are children of God because the word of God, Jesus Christ became flesh and dwelt among us because Jesus chooses to break into our reality. We are the head and not the tail because Jesus chooses to break into our reality. We are the beloved of the most high God. So we need to act like it. May the love of God surround us. May the strength of Christ uplift us. May peace from the Holy Spirit bring grace to unite us now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen. Yeah.